Okay, hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. Mwah. We have a crazy video idea for you today. Basically, uh, Austin and I were curious as to whether or not ChatGPT, y'all know it, we were curious as to whether or not ChatGPT uh, had any music opinions, or if we could get it to formulate uh, some semblance of uh, music preference. And we did that in the form of a list, a top 10 list. I don't know exactly how ChatGPT came about uh, deciding that these 10 albums uh, are are the, the best or uh, greatest, its favorite, but uh, it did and I'm going to go over this top 10 list, uh, as well as ChatGPT's uh, justifications, because it's it's not just a list. There's actually reasoning from what I understand. I haven't listened to it yet. I have not spoiled and not listened ahead. There's actually reasoning behind these choices from what I've been told by Austin. So maybe I'll disagree with some of the sentiments and some of the choices, I, I guess we'll uh, find out. But okay, let's uh, give this top 10 list here a shot and see what chat GPT uh, uh, listed. Number 10, Spirit of Eden by Talk Talk. Talk Talk, Spirit of Eden is a bold departure from their synth pop roots, marking a transformative moment in their musical journey. The album's ethereal soundscapes and hushed vocals create an immersive experience that blurs the lines between post-rock, ambient, and jazz influences. Each track is a sonic tapestry, where instruments and textures delicately intertwine, showcasing a rare level of musicianship and creativity. Okay, number 10, Talk Talk Spirit of Eden. Not, not a bad choice. Kind of a big classic art rock record uh, that is beloved by many. Great record, love it myself. But what does ChatGPT know about uh, freaking that Talk Talk album. Spirit of Eden is such an incredible exploration of mortality as well. ChatGPT doesn't even know how to be alive. I mean, I'm not trying to be a, a dick here and gatekeep, but I just kind of feel like this album wasn't written uh, for AI beings while the justification uh, was there. Uh, it, it mostly just kind of read like a, I don't know, just like an IMDB synopsis of, of an album as opposed to, I don't know, any kind of like a, a explanation or, you know, relation to the work emotionally, but whatever. Number nine in the airplane over the sea by Neutral Milk Hotel. In the airplane over the sea is an indie rock gem that transcends conventional songwriting. Jeff Mangum's poetic and often enigmatic lyrics. Combined with the album's lo-fi production and brass instrumentation, create an emotional whirlwind that captivates listeners. Its eclectic blend of folk, punk, and psychedelic elements results in a unique and timeless masterpiece. Although it flew under the radar upon release, it has- <laughs> These justifications read like um, Patrick Bateman telling me why an album is great just before he's about to throw an axe into my head. In the aeroplane over the sea. At number nine, geez, uh, ChatGPT, you have generic ass indie taste. Come on, step it up. Number eight, Hounds of Love by Kate Bush. Kate Bush's Hounds of Love is an artistic triumph that showcases her musical prowess and unparalleled creativity. Split into two distinct halves, the album combines the accessible and melodic singles of Hounds of Love with the conceptual and experimental suite of the Night Wave. Bush's ethereal vocals and evocative storytelling elevate the album to a level of enchantment creating an immersive sonic journey that leaves a lasting impact on listeners. It's not a very adventurous or eclectic list. You know, it's, it's very kind of agreed upon shit, but uh, still great album. And, and it was nice of ChatGPT to really kind of, you know, make note of the uh, uh, more conceptual elements of the album. I'm not catching any hot takes here so far in terms of like, choices uh, as far as albums um, or, you know, even notes uh, and descriptions about the records themselves. Hounds of Love, great album, uh, no shade to it whatsoever. I've reviewed it myself. Easily worthy of one's top 10 list. I just feel like ChatGPT is just choosing very agreeable 
records, you know, for like the music nerd set. Uh, like it's, it's, it's really trying to, you know, uh, uh, be a friend to and please everyone. And it's, it's never going to work. You, you got to throw one hot take out there. Take a risk. Come on. What's, what's number, number seven? seven? Number seven, Vespertine by Bjork. Bjork's Vespertine is a delicate and intimate exploration of love, nature, and the human experience. The album's lush orchestration, glitchy electronic textures, and Bork's mesmerizing vocals come together to create an ethereal and enchanting sonic landscape. Vespertine is a masterful blend of electronic and organic elements, presenting a deeply personal and emotionally resonant work of art that continues to influence the world of experimental pop. Vespertine by Bork. Either way, Vespertine, great pick. Great choice. Good good choice for number seven. Excellent art pop album. A completely wondrous and otherworldly record uh, that just, just kind of transports me to another place. I feel like we're in a competition here to uh, uh, describe uh, the music that uh, uh, is being <laughs> discussed. Ah, I'm being replaced. Number six, Sound of Silver by Elk Sound Systems. Sound of Elk Sound Systems? Elk Sound Systems. Sound of Silver is a genre-defining album that solidifies Elk Sound Systems' status as pioneer. Sound Systems? Number five, it is Biogen by Sigur Ross. Sigur Ross Agates Biogen is an atmospheric masterpiece that transcends linguistic barriers. Some primarily in the invented Hopal and Dicob language, the album's ethereal soundscapes, soaring vocals, and emotive instrumentation evoke a sense of otherworldly beauty. The band's ability to create oral landscapes that oscillate between serenity and urgency has some- yeah, This Cigarosa album at number five, like best albums I presume of all time. I mean, it's really good, but there are much better post-rock albums. And honestly, you already had Talk Talk in the mix. You are just, you're just having too much of a post-rock bias. Also, we're getting near number four. No jazz, no hip hop, no black artists, nothing released uh, in the 70s and before that. I think Chat PPGs, Ch 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 I think Chat CPP is uh, uh, being, being a little racist, TBH. Number four, Pink Moon by Nick Drake. Nick Drake's Pink Moon is- I don't even want to hear the description because I know the description is going to be just as basic as the pick itself. Sorry for the hot take. Again, no shade. Uh, and it's nothing against the album or Nick Drake personally. It's a beautiful record. It's more just kind of the disappointment I have with the lack of surprises in this list. Like given what we've seen so far, I would guess in the last three spots, we're probably going to see maybe Loveless by My Bloody Valentine somewhere in the mix. We'll see. Number three, Rid of Me by P.G. Harvey. P.G. Harvey. Okay, P.G. P.G. Harvey, really? P.G. Harvey? I mean, Rid of Me is an excellent album. Great record. Fantastic record. Um, did not expect PJ to make it into the mix on this, interestingly and surprisingly. That's, That's great, though, because while she is stellar, she has attained classic status, and Rid of Me is a super raw and underrated 90s record. Rid of Me isn't as, I think, obvious a choice as some of what we have seen so far. Okay, wh what's the description on here like? Number three, Rid of Me by P.G. Harvey. P.G. Harvey's Rid of Me is an unapologetically raw and powerful alternative rock album that showcases her fearless and provocative artistry. Harvey's intense vocals and uncompromising lyrics explore themes of desire love and sexuality, leaving a lasting impact on listeners. The album's aggressive instrumentation and unfiltered emotions cement rid of me as a riveting and transformative listening experience. <laughs> I can't stand these descriptions. It's like listening to announcements over the loudspeaker at the airport or something. All right, we have two more spots left. Let's see if my uh, loveless prediction comes true. Number two, Mezzanine by Massive Attack. Oh, Massive Attack, Mezzanine. We're doing a little trip hop here. Okay, cool. Cool. It only took us for freaking ever going through this list uh, to hit upon an act uh, that had a non-white artist in it. Shout out to Daddy G. Mezzanine <laughs> is a mesmerizing and brooding trip-hop masterpiece that pushed the boundaries of the genre. Massive attacks, dense and moody soundscapes, combined with hunting vocals from various guest artists. Create an album that is both hypnotic and evocative. Mezzanine remains a standout record in electronic music. 
demonstrating its enduring appeal and influence on subsequent generations of musicians. That's it. That's the description. It's just like super influential and stuff and trip hop. All right. These are somehow having less and less substance to them. What's number one? Number one, the miseducation of Lauren Hill by Lauren Hill. <laughs> Lauren Hill at number one. After that endlessly white streak uh, and the massive attack combo breaker did not expect uh, Lauren Hill to come in clutch <laughs> and get the number one spot. Lauren Hill's The Miseducation of Lauren Hill is a timeless R&B and hip-hop classic that showcases Hill's profound artistry and socially conscious lyricism, blending soulful melodies with heartfelt and insightful rhymes. The album offers a refreshing and empowering perspective on life, love, and womanhood. It's a groundbreaking work that resonates with listeners, inspiring subsequent generations of artists to embrace <laughs> So many of the descriptions are like, it inspires listeners for generations. And it's like, okay, buddy. All right, buddy. What's it inspiring them to, them to do, huh? Listen to it. Yeah, all music's inspiring. Anybody can say that. It takes a real person, though, to come in and be like, you know what? This fucking sucks. This, this shit, shit is mid. mid. Yeah, kind of a generic list. But yeah, I guess uh, AI can have a... Uh, uh, Top 10 album preferences, I suppose. Let me know what you thought of this list. Do you guys agree with chat GPT's uh, uh, choices and taste over here? Is it based? Is it generic? Is it bland and disappointing? Or is it uh, awesome, cool beans? You guys let me know. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Anthony Fantano, chat GPT, music opinions forever.